What are the best jobs in data science? It turns out you aren't limited anymore to only the position of data scientist. Instead, there are an additional four other jobs that are growing rapidly. So I wanted to find out more about these jobs, mainly what do they do and how does one get them? What up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel's all about tech and skills for data science. And I find that for those aspiring to work in the field of data science, there's a lot of confusion around what jobs are actually available in this field. So I set out to interview those that work in all these different jobs in the field of data science to learn more about what they do. I wanna give a special shout out to Coursera for putting me in touch with a lot of these interviewers. But as a disclaimer, Coursera is not sponsoring this video, nor do they have any other influence in the making of this video. So with that, let's meet the interviewees. First up, providing the data engineer perspective, is Roberto. He works as a database architect in the education industry and is a recent chemical engineering major. The primary tools he uses for his job are SQL, Python, and even some cloud services. Providing the data scientist perspective is Ruchi. She works as a data scientist in the technology industry. She has an undergraduate degree in computer engineering and is currently working on her master's in information systems management. Primary tool of use is Python, and she's also learning R. Providing the machine learning engineer perspective is Mo. He works as a deep learning specialist in the IT and services industry. He has dual degrees in both mathematics and computer science. And for machine learning, he primarily uses Python with TensorFlow, which he has a lot of different tutorials on Coursera. I'll be providing the data analyst perspective as I work in the chemical industry doing this. And my primary tools of use are Excel, SQL, and also Power BI and Tableau. Last up is the data science manager perspective. This will be provided by Bernard. He is a data strategist that works in the professional services industry. He has both bachelor's and master's degree in both project management and marketing. In addition to one of the most impressive things I've seen of 200 plus courses on Coursera completed. All right, now let's get into what these interviewees do on a day-to-day -day basis for their jobs. And to understand that, we have to understand what a typical data science project entails. The two major milestones when starting this project revolve around first, collecting the data, and then once you have that data, actually diving into and analyzing that data. So let's dive deeper into this first step of the process of collecting the data. This is where a data engineer's role is so crucial for a data science project. So let's hear Roberto's perspective on this. Yes, what I do in my job basically is EPL processes which stands for extraction, transform, and load. The extraction I mostly use, uh, as I said before, a uh, Python uh, to, to do web scrapping. Uh, then the transformation and the load, I do it mostly in SQL. These ETL processes of data engineers are used to create this data that are then later used by members of the data science team. Mm, the big picture of the projects that we have is that we want to develop um, a big infrastructure of data. You can use data to transform it into information and then use that information to make decisions uh, with, with visualizations. So overall, I would argue that based on the data engineer's job of starting that first step in the process of a data science project, their jobs are the most crucial in this process. One thing to note is that in smaller companies, this task itself may actually be performed by a data scientist or even data analysts. Next up is the process for analyzing the data. And typically there's two questions for this. What happened and why this happened? Hardcore data nerds would call this descriptive and diagnostic analytics. Data analysts perform this core function, along with possibly data scientists, which we'll eventually get to. As a data analyst in my day job, I would typically be given a problem and then access to some data in order to help solve that problem. My job is to use tools such as Excel and SQL to understand and dive deeper into the data self itself. Sometimes I even would go as far as to using Python. From there, the other half of my time would really be around communicating what insights I found via meetings and PowerPoints and Word docs. Sometimes I would need to take my analysis a step further. And for this, I would build dashboards in Power BI or Tableau in order to share this data with others that are maybe less data tech savvy and for them to go in and analyze and look at it further. Now for many projects, analyzing the data may be the last step in the process. But for those that have more advanced data science teams, 
They may look further into actually predicting the data. This involves looking at what will happen and also what action should we take. Those hardcore data nerds would call this predictive and prescriptive analytics. Machine learning engineers, and sometimes even data scientists, are used for this process to build and also implement machine learning models to solve this. This is a newer journey that even Mo had to discover when he started his journey back in 2012. You know that machine learning engineer is a new, uh, like let's say job title in the market. At that time, I don't remember that uh, the machine learning engineer was a trending job title. So as he was discovering this, he decided to focus more on deep learning, the subset of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Because as you know that deep learning is the heart of AI, in my opinion. Yeah. And deep learning now, yes, it's uh, being in demand and it's uh, solving uh, very complex problems across all industries. We then went further into understanding what Mo does day to day. Uh, regarding my role, uh, specifically, I'm leading the assessment development team at Workera, and the assessment development team is responsible of uh, building competency models. So for these models, machine learning engineers are using a language like Python to build and test models in order to answer that question of what will happen and what action should we take. Sometimes you can even find data scientists doing this type of job, but when it gets to implementing models, which I've tried myself as well and failed miserably, it turns out that it's really difficult and you need a professional like a machine learning engineer to do this. So then where do data scientists fit into this process? As previously hinted towards, they really could be used at any stage within this process. So they could be used for collecting, analyzing, and maybe even predicting the data. So I'm sure many of you can relate to Ruchi when she was first entering this field. So if someone's starting out in the domain, they might be just as lost as I was. And right. they might be wondering, okay, how many courses should I take? How many projects should I do? Which domain should I pick? But like I said before, it's just based on your interest. Like, what do you want to do? It's not what you have to do, but what you want to do. And just go where your interest takes you. And then once you find the domain that interests you, here are her recommended next steps. So we really need to delve deep into the domain and understand how things work and what's required specific to a problem statement to do well there. So in order to understand what a data scientist does day to day, I think you have to understand what is the size of the data science team. For a smaller team, such as a startup, they may be doing the job of that of a data engineer and also of that of a data analyst. For larger teams where roles are more defined, they may be doing more advanced analytics than a data analyst, and maybe even guiding machine learning projects with machine learning engineers underneath them. So we covered the four main roles that actually work directly with data, but what happens if you're like Bernard and you don't really even like to code or dig into the data? Sometimes you like stuff, sometimes you don't like stuff. Just coding, yeah. just all this line of code, just, I, I look at them and I say, yeah, not my stuff. So I'm going to let this guy decide and create the stuff because it will be much better than me. They're much smarter in this sense. And I will just take care of where I'm good at. So for larger companies, you need someone like a data science manager to ensure everybody on the data science team is working towards that common goal. Uh, this is uh, where I think a data, uh, data manager will, 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 will come. Uh, will come. These guys will just have a look at the company and say, okay, we need to build something. We need to build, uh, so we know where we want to go and now we have to build everything. So we will want to create like a data office. These managers work as a liaison between the stakeholders and then the data engineers, analysts and scientists themselves to actually go towards solving a problem. So how do these jobs compare when we're talking about a salary? Overall, I'm not a big fan of actually comparing salary or even picking a job based on being a higher salary. I think that you should pick a job based on what your passion is and what you have an interest in. For me as a data analyst, I get more joy out of the tools I get to use and the analysis I get to inform and the things that I find out and discover than my paycheck that I actually receive. When looking for any of these roles, it's important to understand that sometimes these names won't match exactly. I'll find that companies will a lot of times call a role a data scientist, when in fact, when you look at the responsibilities, it's in fact a data analyst or a data engineer or even a machine learning engineer. So make sure you dig into the responsibilities and roles of that. 
let's dispel this myth that you need a data science degree in order to land a job in this field. As shown by these interviewees, that's not the case. I have found, however, that those with a STEM degree typically have an easier transition into this field. But what about those that have a non-STEM degree? I've also found success from these people as well after they've beefed up their knowledge on things like math and stats. For those without a degree at all, I'm a little pessimistic about job opportunities, but with large companies such as Google, offering to accept things like the Google Data Analytics Certificate in place of a four-year degree, I feel that change is coming towards this in the future. Now that we understand what these jobs do and what they entail, let's look at what these interviewees did in order to land their jobs. Regarding certificates, I think Roberto showcased an excellent example of how you can capture value from these. Are you using your chemical engineering uh, degree at all? No, no, I don't use it. I don't use it that much. Well, uh, I actually learn everything I know about uh, data and th those things by courses in mm -hmm. Coursera actually. And the most common theme that I've found across all interviewees is this passion and desire for continuing education. I'm a long life learner and I believe in that learning should be a continuous. You can't just learn or take courses or learn for two or three years and then when you land a job and start working in any industry, you should stop learning, no. And more specifically, implementing what you learn for self-development. Uh, you use your free time to learn new things. You use your uh, work time to improve, to practice and improve, because you need to practice, otherwise it will be lost. And then uh, just like new knowledge and you will become like so much better. But what if you don't have a job currently? Here's what Ruchi did in order to implement the skills that she learned. Mainly it was me trying to work on projects that sparked my learning and interest and helped me to try and learn more over time. So I would say that project-based learning was something that helped me more. And Roberto even added this positive aspect of doing projects. So I think it's really important that the people start learning, start uh, trying to do projects to develop uh, more their, their skills and to show up that they have some, some experience and some to offer to the companies. So what do you do with these projects? Are there any benefits besides just learning? I start um, doing the Google Data Analytics certification and something that it says that I think is really interesting or important uh, is that you should make a portfolio. And that's what Roberto then did. He gathered all those different projects he made, put them into a portfolio website and launched it. And what happened next was pretty awesome. It took me like two weeks to find a job. And, and it was really interesting because I got more calls and offers in one week after I put that portfolio in my resume than the whole four months before that. And it was, I was shocked be, be, because of that. Rushi, however, took a slightly different approach by showcasing her work through social media. This actually helped her land and be selected to be an ambassador for Z by HP for data science. Yeah, I think it was because of my active involvement with the community and just contributions that are relevant to the domain. It's more better to have people you form relations with on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter where you have a community rather than just um, applying to jobs that are available because most of the times you you might get an opportunity that you didn't know you would. <laughs> Ruchi is highly active in the data science community on both Kaggle and LinkedIn. So what does her activity typically look like? Uh, I just talk about my work that I'm currently doing. So like today I published a data set about uh, Coursera's uh, global skills report. And I wanted to, date, wanted to see how that data uh, translates and what analysis I can draw from that. So what are some added benefits of this active involvement in the community? Well, I think Mo captures this perfectly. Uh, I don't know if you will believe me. Uh, for all my work that I'm doing, I. I didn't apply a resume. Like uh, nobody asked me for my resume, for my educational background, because they know that I'm a social media influencer. I'm experienced in the field. A lot 
uh, of my, uh, let's say, uh, students or people that I mentored before, they posted about me on LinkedIn about who is Moriba Inter. And this is, uh, this is really amazing too. So overall, what I hope you capture from this video is that it's not about having a specific certificate or a certain degree. Instead, it's about becoming active in the community and sharing your passions and learnings with others, whether that be a portfolio or via a social media outlet. This has led to all the different interviewees, including myself, landing their dream jobs in data science. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.